This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to discuss pancreatitis in dogs and cats and how you can treat your mildly affected animal at home. So what can you do for mildly affected cases? And specifically, um, I'm speaking to pet owners, specifically dog owners, um, where you've got a dog at home, they likely have a mild case of pancreatitis, um, perhaps they've had a history of pancreatitis, and we're look, dealing with something more chronic. Um, to begin with, I want to show you sort of the, the basic principle and what I would do in veterinary practice. Because truthfully, you know, not every pet owner could afford the, the whole variety array of diagnostic tests that for us to diagnose pancreatitis, for sure, um, they couldn't afford the hospitalization, they couldn't afford the IV fluids. So that meant me having a bit of discussion with this is what I think your dog has and this is how you can treat them at home. So I think it's really applicable for you guys today in terms of something you can take away from this. So first specifically the dogs. Um, so we've got suspect a mild case of pancreatitis. Maybe you've seen your vet, they've, <clears throat> they've got some abdominal pain, they've, especially in that right hand side. Your dog's hunched, he's not eating. He's been throwing up a bit. So here are some of the specific things um, that you can be doing at home initially to really help your dog. <clears throat> the first point is nothing orally for 20 to 20, 12 to 24 hours. They're called MPO, nothing orally 12 to 24 hours. We need to rest that pancreas. So you're not giving your dog anything orally as, as far as food wise or water minimum 12 hours because we know as soon as anything hits that upper small intestine the duodenum it's then re-stimulating the pancreas it, it keeps it additionally inflamed it's releasing more of the digestive enzymes you have more of that abdominal pain the vomiting so that's the first big key point the second thing though is preventing your dog from getting additionally dehydrated so we need to be giving them some form of fluid replacement so that's, that means, you know, understanding how to give sub -Q fluids, which I have here. So that means going to your veterinary, going to a veterinary clinic, picking up a bag of lactated ringers, for instance, as I have here. It's a standard IV fluid replacement therapy. Um, you're going to have a drip set, the line, um, along with a moderate size. This is an 18 gauge needle. So there I have the bag up. We have the fluid flowing here. I think you can see it going on the table there. As far as the approximate amount to give, um, ideally in veterinary practice, you know, we would calculate, you know, your dog's 24 hour fluid requirement, and that's 50 mils per kilo for 24 hours. Add in ongoing losses as if they're vomiting and they're percent dehydrated they are. So we've assessed them at 5% dehydration. And you'll get a much more specific amount of IV fluid that we want to replace over a 24 hour period then calculate that per hour, how much fluid we're giving them by, per hour. For the sake of simplicity's sake, I just want to give you a sort of a rough amount of when I was sending clients home, getting, getting them to give fluid at home or sub-Q fluid. Um, so something like Lewis here, or for any animal, a pretty standard amount, and I'll equate it back to a, a 10 pound animal, is about 100 mils per 10 pounds. And typically I'm giving that would be giving that twice a day. So I've got a client and they couldn't afford all this variety of treatment. I'd say you know, they've got a 10 pound dog. I say give them 100 mils in the morning, 100 mils that evening, um, maybe 100 mils the following morning. And then, then assuming they've stopped vomiting, then I would have them try offering some of that bland food, you know, such as the chicken and rice, you know, that full 24 hours later. They keep that down, they don't vomit. And then, then I'd offer them, obviously, the water at the same time. And they're keeping that down. And then you could stop the sub-Q fluids. So as I said, that's about 100 mils per 10 pounds, given twice daily. So how I would do it, I'll just show you here with Lewis. And I do have a whole video on, on how to give sub-Q fluids at home. And I'm just going to show you so you're clear is this section of the video. So I'm just grabbing a fold of skin up in behind his shoulder blades, up in front of his shoulder blades, in the back of his neck. I'm just going to angle it slightly at about 45 degrees so it's going down um, just underneath the skin doing a small little pop it just pops under the skin and i just hold the bag up and then watch it drip in and 
as you can see here, I'll, there's a mark on the IV fluid bag. So right now it's sitting at the 500 mil mark. If I was to give, you know, that 100 mils, let's call Lewis 10 pounds, <clears throat> and then I'd let it go to the 400 mark. It sounds fairly daunting, and it's actually surprisingly very simple. So not only are we, are, by doing this, are you not only rehydrating your dog so he doesn't get additionally dehydrated, you're also replacing some of those lost electrolytes. And the other big key point is that we're not triggering the pancreas. I mean, that's a real big principle of pancreatitis. We're not triggering, we're not causing it to work. It gives a chance for it to rest and then become uninflamed. And the real key principle in treating pancreatitis. So let's imagine we've given him the, the 100 mils because we're calling him a 10 pound dog. So there's his morning treatment of sub-Q fluids. The next big principle in terms of treating any dog that has, but even mild pancreatitis, is adequate pain control. The bit, there's a couple big issues. One, you can't, we don't want to be giving them anything orally. So one, we know we're gonna, that's going to then stimulate the pancreas and further prolong the pancreatitis. Secondly, we know that those anti-inflammatory drugs, you know, such as this drug here, Medicam or Meloxicam, I mean, that can actually additionally inflame and upset the stomach and inflame the pancreas. And so clearly we're trying to avoid all that. So conventionally in veterinary practice, that's when we're starting to look at using the narcotics, something like a fentanyl patch, something that doesn't have to be given orally to your dog. But you don't have that option at home. So what else could you use that's going to give your dog some pain relief, but at the same time not inflame his pancreas? <clears throat> of all the different ones I've looked at, I think probably the most important one would be getting an essential oil. This is actually frankincense here. So this frankincense essential oil, because we know Boswellia, Boswellia itself has some huge benefits um, for adequate pain relief. One interesting study I, I recently read, they took a combination of Boswellia and curcumin, or, or which is isolated from turmeric, and they found it to be as effective uh, as oral diclofenac, uh, one of the one of the oral anti-inflammatory drugs, so huge and it, in my opinion they're just underused and underappreciated. Period. A variety of the natural options. Of course, that's a, another video for another day. But as far as how to give your dog some adequate pain relief and not give them anything orally, I think it's a real easy way to do it and potentially really effective. So what I've got here is two tablespoons of olive oil. So you need some form of carrier oil olive oil or coconut oil. So I've got it sitting here in a little jar and I'm gonna make a 2% solution. So that's gonna be putting in 10 drops of the frankincense. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So 10 drops of that frankincense. And that's gonna be enough to last, I mean, for two or three days. And I would just be rubbing it just in behind my dog's belly where he's really sore. So I just want to spread the fur <clears throat> as best you can and rub it in that area. <clears throat> I read another study and they're actually talking about the benefits of some of the essential oils and they actually found peppermint to be very helpful for people that had headaches such as migraine headaches. But frankincense in particular, we know it's great for pain relief, Boswellia. And it's one of the few natural pain ones that's been studied we know is effective. So then I'd be putting that on, you know, twice a day too. So there's sort of the big, the sort of big three, three big key principles where you're not giving anything orally, you're re keeping them rehydrated with sub-Q fluids, we're giving them some adequate pain relief. The last home remedy I want to discuss, when we're looking at an uncomplicated or mild case of pancreatitis, uh, is a use of an antacid called Pepsid. Um, it's known, the actual name of that drug is called Famotidine, so it's over the counter. Um, the dog dose is 0.5 milligrams per kilo um, every 12 hours. So that equates, so if we've got a 10 pound dog, that equates to 2.5 milligrams of that tablet. So they're typically 10 milligram tablets, you're giving a quarter of the tablet um, every 12 hours. So the example would be that you know, you've given your dog the sample fluids, you've given, good oh boy, Lewis, you've given him, you know, he's not getting anything orally, you put on the topical pain control, but he's still somewhat nauseous and he's still vomiting. 
And there's one other thing, you know, you wanted to, to look at giving, that would be the one last thing called Pepsitor from Autodine. I said earlier, so you're looking at a dose of 0.5 milligram per kilo every 12 hours. So for a 10 pound dog, that's 2.5 milligrams, a quarter of a 10 milligram, a quarter of a 10 milligram tablet giving every 12 hours. And then in most cases, we got these mild cases, within a 24 to 40 hour period, your dog is gonna have then responded to that treatment. And then we're gonna introduce that bland food, such as the chicken and rice, the simplest thing to do. We know it's bland, low fat, period. And, th and then he's recovered. And by following those steps, I really think that can help the majority of you that are then you know, watching this video wanting, thinking like, what else can I be doing at home? Thank you for watching this edition of NRA Secrets. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above that can subscribe you to my channel. And then you go ahead and click that link in the box below and I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your pets at home with my top natural remedies.